Ba -ba -bam. Hey everybody, you have made it to the end, part 15, and the Aegis. Knowledge, blades, and bolt rounds are not the only weapons wielded by the Grey Knights. Every Grey Knight is a powerful psyker, pure and true, in a way unlike any other within the Imperium. The result of their rigorous selection, brutal training regime, and genetic gift they share with the Emperor. Ah, ding, 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 ding. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I know it's very, very subtle. You really got to pick out the details in this fluff. And I'm here to point it out to you. It is settled right then and there. <clears throat> the result of their rigorous selection, brutal training regime, and the genetic gift they share with, not from, with the emperor, is that they are able to shape the warp to their will while resisting its corrupting taint, aiding and enhancing their natural gifts is the Aegis. So if you remember in my a few videos ago, I said that what makes the Grey Knight special is actually that they're one in a million. There's something in the selection process that finds these people. So now that's what they're saying. There's three parts. Three parts. I triumvirate. Yeah, why not? It is something special about them, their humanity, whatever. Uh, it is the brutal training regime that was designed by Malkador, the Sigilet, and finally, some genetic trait that they share with the Emperor. My personal theory on what this genetic trait is, is the ability to kind of, how can I say it, form a hive mind. Think of the Borg. All the Grey Knights, they're not really individuals. They are all, they're your squad, they're all in each other's heads. Possibly the whole chapter even is in each other's heads all the time, every day. There is no secrecy. There is no hiding. All the Grey Knights are psychically linked. All their thoughts are aware to each of them all the time, 24-7. And this... This is a very practical way to ensure no Grey Knight ever becomes corrupted. How can you? You're connected to all the other Grey Knights all of the time. It would be very difficult for a Grey Knight to suddenly start getting corrupted because they would immediately, and I mean immediately, even see a hint of a beginning of a trace of an idea of a possibility uh, that that would be occurring and stop it <clears throat> so that would be the emperor's gift part i'm i'm guessing bum, 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 because they said yes uh, aiding and enhancing their natural gifts natural gifts not inherited from the emperor's gift but their natural gifts is the aegis a complex web of wards and glyphs worked into their armor with the aid of the Aegis, a Grey Knight has unequaled protection from the warp, creatures, and pernicious sorcerers alike. It allows them to manifest psychic magics without the same risk of possession or corruption faced by human psychers. There you go again. A Grey Knight is not inherently incorruptible. Okay, it says right there, the Aegis is a part of their armor. It's not a part of them. It's a part of Grey Knight power armor. Take off the armor, the Aegis is gone. Put on the armor, and they are able to, uh, like they said, manifest psychic magics without the same risk of possession or corruption faced by human psychers. So there you go. That means you take it off, and they are at risk 
of possession or corruption faced by other human psychers. At least that's how I hear that. <clears throat> when compared to other space marine psychers, boom, pay attention. The Grey Knight's Aegis allows them to delve deeper into the warp or overcome more powerful enemy manifestations. While a space marine librarian can bend the immaterium to his will, creating transient effects and sudden deadly manifestations, he must always be wary of the powers he controls, lest it turns and controls him. The Aegis mitigates these effects. Furthermore, enemy powers will often fail completely when directed at an Aegis-equipped Grey Knight. Flaring silver ruins and an unearthly haze across its shining surface are the only evidence that the Aegis is active and protecting the wearer from harm. It's the suit of armor. That's what's protecting him. Zero chance of apparels from the warp. Zero. Grey Knights cannot suffer that, apparently. According to the fluff, I'm not talking about game rules. Don't try to hit me there. I'm just saying this said there is zero chance of a Grey Knight ever being in any danger from using his psychic powers with the Aegis protecting him. Period. Now, let's get on to the propaganda. Tapestry of Chaos. The galaxy is plagued by warp storms, empirical rift, imperia, imperia, imperial, whatever, warp rifts, and tears in reality where the cold, corrupting blood of the imperium, immaterium, not imperium, immaterium, bleeds through into the void. Where the boundaries of the material universe wear thin, it falls to the Grey Knights to try and contain them. And well, uh, you know what? I'm doing that again. This is just really awkward writing. I'm sorry. I didn't go crazy. This is called the Tapestry of Chaos, and I'm going to try it again. Take two. The galaxy is plagued by warp storms imperial rifts and tears in reality where the cold corrupting blood of the immaterium bleeds through into the void that's what it says where the boundaries of the material universe wear thin it falls to the gray knights to try and contain them and quell the inevitable demonic tide that spills through yes i shit you not that's one sentence that's why i'm stumbling here a little bit <laughs> however in the centuries since the chapter's creation the veil between reality and the realm of chaos has weakened and, like an ancient tapestry, its frayed threads have come undone in ever-increasing numbers. That was another single sentence. You need to get that whole thing out in one take. Wow. But basically, um, <laughs> they're saying the universe is falling apart. That the dimensional barriers between the physical universe and the warp is is uh, is coming undone. It also sounds, I hate to say it, very similar to what happened in Star Trek when they said that uh, warp travel, what ha <laughs> ha warp travel, there you go, yeah, um, was actually punching holes in the reality. It was essentially wearing it thin that ships that would travel at warp speeds along trade routes that after hundreds of years of traveling in the same line along those trade lights at warp speed they essentially will eventually rip the physical universe apart and subspace not the materium will bleed through making those areas impassable to warp travel just impassable 
which would of course then be, be that's kind of a problem and i guess the scientist that discovered this was was not believed so his um response was to detonate a warp bomb creating essentially an eye of terror in the star trek universe yes people you heard it here first the star trek universe actually has an eye of terror in it a place where there's a rip a large large rip in reality in space that ships cannot fly through as a warning of you need to, to to curb your warp travel and i have a feeling we're going to get something like that here from this let's go on and find out at the end of the 41st millennium there are thousands of warp storms demonic wells and tears in real space recorded by the immaterium and millions more spoken of in legends and rumor this guy really likes long sentences some of the greatest breaches such as the eye of terror or the maelstrom define whole regions with their baleful energies others are hidden away growing slowly in the darkness eventually ripping asunder with a wail of madness and corruption before unleashing their power upon unprepared planets and systems yes that was one sentence too <laughs> so that was that the tapestry of chaos the universe is coming undone you have made it through all 15 parts of who are gray knights enjoy you did it you will be getting your no prize in the mail any day now see you then